Hey guys, this is Diana from WeVideo. Welcome to the master class on building your personal narrative. This video is part of a blog series on how to create your personal narrative. I invite you to check it out on our blog before you see this video so that you can understand some of the references I'll do throughout the tutorial. If you already did, welcome back. Since we're building a complex story using multiple video tracks and soundtracks, we'll be working with the timeline and advanced timeline mode. Let's start by naming our video before we go any further. By now your clips should be uploaded and you can find them in the media library. As we've mentioned before, a personal narrative is guided by the voice of the storyteller. So the first thing I'll do is drop my narration into the voiceover track. If I hadn't recorded it earlier, I could do it here as well by using the voiceover feature. Next, it's time to create a rough edit of my narrative. As I listen to my story, I drop the clips that best represent the narration. For example, I use a photo from my wedding as the first photo in my narrative. I continue on as I review the narrative, adding roughly the pieces of the story in sequence. I don't find match them yet, since I'll do that later. The goal now is to see if the visual elements I have are enough to complete the story and convey my story points. Notice that I am adding my clips in the main track. This track acts differently than the rest of the tracks. When you trim or rearrange clips, the main track keeps the clips together and ripples with the changes. In other words, it is a gapless track. You can manually create gaps by dragging solid clips if you wish to space the clips out. I have added a spacer clip here, since I don't have an image to go with my voiceover. This allows me to continue building the sequence and preview my video while I figure out what I'd like to add. Spacers can also be used to create intrigue, like it did at the top of the narrative. Once I find the clip I want to add to replace the spacer, I add it in the additional video track. I then trim it to match the spacer and drop it in the main track. Finally, I erase the spacer. This will maintain my story's timing and will ensure nothing is moved from my narrative. Once I have the main story built, it's time to add additional items. This could be text, animation, special effects, transitions, etc. But before I do this, I activate the ripple edit function. This will maintain the items I add in other layers connected to the main layer and will come in very handy as I fine tune the clips in the main track. The ripple edit function is a premium feature. Let's start by adding some transitions. Transitions, although fun to use, should be used with a purpose. I did not use them between all of the clips. I decided to jump from clip to clip and add only one if I wanted to make a point. When I use transitions, I usually stick with the traditional ones. A crossfade usually denotes the passing of time, which is exactly what I want to reflect here. I am using it to emphasize that I spent a lot of time looking out a window, so I added in between the clips. A dip to white or a dip to black is helpful when transitioning from or to a blank clip or at the end or beginning of a video, like I did here. Now let's add some additional clips to our second layer. When working with layers, you need to keep in mind that what you have on the top track is what's visible. For my narrative, I used the additional layer to add the failed photos of the hummingbird on top of a black clip. I did not add them in the main track because I wanted to leave a black gap between each of them to look like a shutter effect. And by adding them in the top track, I was able to leave gaps in between the clips to show the black clip on the main layer. The additional track is also where I added my text graphics. Once dragged to the timeline, I open the controls and edit them. I can change the format or even the placement of the graphics. And then, when I'm done, I preview it to see how it looks with all the layers. Now that I have the core story in place, I'll switch to the advanced timeline mode because I want to have some additional controls that only the advanced mode provides. Before I do that, notice that as I change modes, all my clips stay in the timeline, allowing me to continue building up my story as if nothing happened. 
One of the biggest benefits of working in timeline and advanced timeline mode is that I can add multiple audio and video tracks. As I move the clips around, WeVideo's smart feature adds a new track if there is an overlap in my clips to help display them properly. But I can always add or erase them by clicking on the advanced settings. Here you can also find the volume and opacity level controls. If I activate opacity, a line appears on top of the clips. I can then click on the dots and move them up or down or side to side to create a fade in or out. I can add new dots by clicking on top of the line or erase them by double clicking on top of them. The volume controls work the same way. So I'll fine tune both opacity and volume for all my clips. As you preview your complete story, you might notice that some fine editing is needed, both in the audio track and the video track. Let's start by editing the audio. On the advanced timeline mode, you have the option to control the audio of a whole track as opposed to the timeline where you can only manage the audio of individual clips. I want to listen only to my narrative and the music track for my narrative that I'll drop in the additional audio track to see how they both sound together. In order to do that, I'll mute the main track by moving the slider all the way to the side and lower the volume of the music the same way. Next, I want to keep the narration tighter, so I'm going to edit my narration track. I usually listen to the audio and then stop the playback by clicking on the space bar. Then I click on the split icon or S on my keyboard and split the clip. I then move the second part of the audio clip to the next audio track and position it almost on top of the other one to remove the gap. I fine trim the ends until I see the beginning of the waveform and move it slightly until I'm happy with the pacing. Since I'm doing such fine edits, the timeline zoom comes really handy. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. I repeat this with the rest of the spaces until I'm happy with the flow of the narrative. Sometimes a gap in the audio is needed. Here is where I add the room tone in between the spaces so that the audio level is maintained. Once the audio is done, I preview the whole story one more time and fine edit the visuals to match the narrative. We're getting to the end of the editing process and now it is where we add the final touches to the video. The Ken Burns effect is one of my favorite features to add to my images and even my videos. Throughout the story, all of my photos had a slight animation that helped them come to life as opposed to presenting them as a static photo. You can see that it played a big role when I finally revealed the hummingbird. I added this animation by clicking on the FX tab in the edit controls and selecting Ken Burns. I then choose the start and endpoints for my animation and preview. If I extend the clip longer, the animation is displayed slower, which worked great to maintain the engagement level in that hummingbird reveal. Finally, it is time to see the preview one more time before I publish the rough cut. Sharing your rough cut with a friend might help you get a different perspective. As with any video, it can allow you to see the story through someone else's eyes and remove yourself a bit to do the fine edit with fresh eyes. I hope this inspired you to create your own narrative video. If you want to see my personal narrative again, click on the link in the description. If you want to read the steps on how to create a personal narrative, visit our blog for more information. Until next time, happy creating!